What's up, guys? I know I said I wasn't going to do this every week, and I'm still not going to, but I do think it's important to talk a little bit about the, the Vegas race uh, and, of course, the Aero package, which for me was a huge question mark going into the race. I didn't really know what to expect. I just knew it wasn't going to be, uh, you know, exactly the same as, as what happened in Atlanta. And I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, the Atlanta race versus this race, which is really where this package deal comes in. First of all, the Vegas race for me was okay. It wasn't a bad race. It was actually better than I thought it would be, okay? It wasn't terrible. There was passing. Um... It was entertaining for the most part. Was it a great race? Not to me. Um, but it was good. It was definitely something, hey, I, I saw it. It was mildly entertaining and I'm ready for the next race. Compared to Atlanta, I'm sorry. Atlanta for me was easily a much better race. So I'm going to talk about the differences between these two races as well as some of the similarities. So let me get out to some of the good stuff, which they had kind of in common. Um, the number one thing for me with Vegas was that it wasn't pack racing. So you didn't have these guys all bunched up in a pack like we saw at the All-Star race last year, which really kick-started this entire Aero Package deal. And that for me was a huge positive. I was glad we didn't get that, and you saw right off the bat that these, you know, after the first lap, these cars really started spreading out. Uh, you did see passing throughout the field. Uh, there was, you know, some side-by-side, -side, you know, fighting and stuff like that. So, it this race definitely had its moments, and much like Atlanta, it wasn't pack racing, and that for me was the biggest positive. So that's the biggest fear I had, and, you know, I was pleased to see that it didn't turn out that way. Now, that's pretty much where the similarities kind of end. This is where I have issues with the race. Again, I'm not saying it was a bad race. It was good. I don't think it was any, any better than that. Uh... You did get the cars spreading out. However, in this race, unlike Atlanta, it was all about aero. The things that I liked about the Atlanta race, it was a it was more mechanical grip, tire wear. You saw cars getting squirrely all the time. And if they didn't hit their marks just right, you know, they the car would lose some control. And most importantly, people were not running wide open. That's really the biggest problem I have with that race at, at Vegas. You saw these cars running wide open for, for a long time. And only cars that, were, I guess, were way off in the setup couldn't do that. But for the most part, a large portion of the field, especially these top-tier cars, they were running wide open throttle. Why do I hate that so much? Because it takes a huge tool away from drivers. Throttle control. Having to lift at certain points and play with that throttle. That's a huge part of racing. And especially at traditional mile and a half tracks, you shouldn't be able to run wide open with these cars. Now they're running wide open. So that's a tool that you just took away from drivers. So now it becomes that much less about these drivers. And there's a lot less options for them. The adjustments, you know, yeah, you can make these cars better, obviously. But you didn't see, it. it I don't, it, it didn't feel like it played as big of a role. Because the tire wear was not really an issue. As I said, they're running wide open. You, I don't remember seeing a single car... Uh, 
so loose that it looked like it was going to spin out. You know, at all of these mile and a half races, eventually, you'll see a guy either almost spin out or actually spin out. You know, coming out of uh, the exit of a turn. You know, maybe they, they get on the gas a little too too soon, a little too, too uh, aggressively. I didn't see that at all in this race. They were wide open. These cars were on rails. And while they were running multiple lines, other drivers, they, oh, they, they came out and they said, you know, you could draft, but the moment you try, you got out of that draft and you tried to make a move to make a pass or something, it was extremely difficult. These cars are aerosensitive. And this is the problem I have. Um, there's less options. And yeah, you saw a few passes for the lead throughout the day, but it wasn't any more passing up front than we've seen traditionally before this whole aero package deal. So I think a large part of this movement we've had with people complaining about the racing and, and saying how bad it is and how they don't want to see a guy lead so many laps and get so far ahead of the field in lapping cars. I don't understand where that came from because historically, that's the way NASCAR has always been. You've always had a couple of cars that show up to a race and they're just better than everyone else on that particular weekend. And they dominate most of the race. And that's what we've always had. So I think people misdiagnosed the, the real issues with NASCAR and they're, they've blamed it all on the on-track product and racing and I don't think that's really been, it wasn't really that big of a problem for me. I think that, I'll talk about the, the, the real issues, but before I get to that, so, so you got wide open racing, still pretty difficult to make moves unless you timed it perfectly and the handling kind of went away for maybe a, a car and, and he couldn't hold the line and so yeah you had passing uh there was a lot of passing also due to long green flag runs and you had all these cars coming into the pit some staying out longer than others so yes there was a lot of uh you know, lead change, not lead changes, but changes for position throughout the, the race. But it, a lot of it just had to do with long green flag runs. And you're going to see all this different strategy play out. I'm sorry. It just looks weird watching these guys wide open for the entire lap, lap after lap. And they're stuck behind cars and there's nothing that's happening. So... I don't, you know, for me, that's a failure on this package. was supposed to resolve that. It's supposed to punch a bigger hole, a wider hole in the air and allow for more uh, passing and, not, and less dirty air. But you still hear these guys complaining about dirty air. Even guys that finish top five. And keep in mind, these guys... They're very mindful of what they say now. They don't want to get reprimanded the way Kyle Busch was by NASCAR. They know NASCAR's watching. They can't just come out and say, this shit sucks. So they're being nice about it. But, I don't know. There's, you know, it was like I said, it wasn't a terrible race. I did somewhat enjoy it. But it wasn't anywhere near as good as Atlanta. You know, I like seeing tire wear. I like it that those guys could not run wide open, lap after lap, and you saw these cars kind of get squirrely, and, and tire wear played a big role. In this race, tires meant nothing. You had guys just take two tires and, and retain good track position. Kurt Busch actually stayed out, and I think he had about 12 laps on his tires on a restart after uh, uh, the, uh, the stage. And guess what? He kept the lead for a long time. And he actually ended up getting a good finish in the race because of the, the 
track position strategy that it played out because he made that move. So tires meant very little in this race, and you saw that play out. And you would think fresh tires, and they offer restart, they couldn't take the lead from him. Really good cars. What does that tell you? Isn't this what the aero package was supposed to resolve? And as hard as, you know, these commentators try, and you heard, you know, wall trip and like, oh, this, you know, trying to make it sound like this aero package is a big success. It's not. I'm sorry. It didn't do what it's meant to do. This race wasn't that different from a lot of other races, except in the fact that they're wide open and you still had arrow push, dirty air. You heard that throughout the entire race. Something you didn't hear in Atlanta. So, the more aero dependent these cars have become, it just, I don't, you're not resolving the problem, you're making it worse. You still had the same people dominating up front. You still had guys leading the race for long periods of time. Yes, there were some lead changes, but no different than any other race. Wasn't different from last week. You had Harvick lead a bunch of laps. And what happens is you get two or three guys that come into the race and have a strong day. And this race turned out to be a lot. The, the track was a little slicker and, and the, the weather was warmer. So Austin Dillon and Sindrick came into the race. They were expected to run really well, but the, the week most of the weekend was cloudy and cooler. So their cars ran differently than what happened with this race. So they couldn't do shit, you know, because the temperature change and what have you. They were never able to recover from that or even make adjust for that. You know, if, if I think if you had uh, 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 tires play a bigger issue and, and have this race be more about mechanical grip, you would have seen things play out differently. But instead, it, you're really at the mercy of aerodynamics, and there's very little you could do about it. Now, Logano was able to have the right adjustments to his car, and he was able to get his car a little better, and that was enough to actually get out and win this race. It was exciting towards the end. You saw Keselowski close in on him and actually almost pull off a win at, on the last lap. Once again, this is what we've seen most of the time. You see guys dominate the race through the first two-thirds of a race, and then the last third of the race, you get a new player come in who makes the right adjustments to his car, and then guys like Kevin Harvick or uh, a Truex, who, who, you know, we, how many times do we see these guys almost completely dominate a race, and at the end, or a Kyle Larson, then at the end, for you know a, a myriad of reasons they end up not winning the race and someone someone else just was able to just make the right move at the end you know i'm not complaining that's you know there's excitement there at to a certain point but my main point is what is so different about this race in terms of the competitiveness than any other race it's not a big difference so how can you proclaim this aero package is, is a, a success? It's not. It didn't do what it's supposed to do. P passing for the lead, it's just as hard as it was before. And now, on top of that, you're running wide open. The drivers have less tools. So everybody's wide open, and you're kind of just running lap after lap behind the guy, hoping that, you know... Something happens and you're able to make a pass. A lot of guys fell to the back and weren't able to recover. And just like most races, you have the same four or five guys up front competing. And that's the way it's always been. So, I'm not killing this race. I thought it was a good race. I thought it was mildly entertaining. I wouldn't walk away from this race like complaining or screaming I'm just 
I'm not crazy about the wide open aspect of, of the racing. Now, let's get to uh, the reason, the real reasons I think NASCAR has struggled through the past decade and has lost viewership. And, and people have taken that and blamed it all on the on the track racing and thinking it has to do with the package. It's not that. In my opinion, there's a lot of reasons why NASCAR has fallen off the, the map. I've said it before that they didn't do anything to expand to new viewership. You know, people that don't normally follow NASCAR. How do you appeal to them? They haven't tried anything. I've already talked about my ideas, things I would try to try to expand and appeal to a wider audience. That's just one thing. But here's something else I don't hear people talk about. So I'm going to talk about it. The biggest reason I think NASCAR has fallen off the map is because people are sick and tired of watching the same group of people dominate these races. That will hurt any sport. Jimmy Johnson winning all those championships in such a short period of time, didn't it didn't help the sport. That hurt the sport. No matter how much NASCAR may try to promote that, how great five in a row, uh, Jimmy Johnson, what a what a how amazing. When the reality is, unless you're a Jimmy Johnson fan or a Hendrick Motorsports fan, that's actually a negative. It's a turnoff. Why is he? Why was he dominating so much? Yes, he's a great driver. Not taking anything away, but. It goes back to the things I've been talking about. These top tier teams are too big and too powerful. You shouldn't have more, in my opinion, than three teams. One, an owner shouldn't have more than three cars. I'm sorry. I know that some people are going to not like hearing that, but these mega teams are dominating. You got Hendrix, you got Gibbs, you got uh, Stuart Haas. And Roush is starting to come back into the picture. But outside of that, you know, there's the rest of the field. These guys are just field fillers now. The 43 car can't do shit. That's an iconic uh, number and car and heritage to the sport. And they are embarrassing every week. And they're a single car team. And before that, they they had a, they were a two car team, but you know, he, Chip Ganassi's competitive, right? And I do think they're gonna they're gonna be a threat, but they're not still they're not yet a top tier team like a Hendrix or a, you know Stuart Haas or a Gibbs. Those got those guys have a stranglehold on the sport, and you know, going in every year. It's going to be one of their drivers who wins the championship, who wins most of the races, right? So you show up. Why should you watch these races when you know you're going to see Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Keselowski, Hamlin, uh, you know, all these guys, the guys that are always in the mix. They're always up front. And it's very rare you see a guy that's unexpected to be competing actually in the top five. And actually there's a chance to win. I'm not saying they have to win, but actually be in the mix at the end. The only places you see that are Talladega and Daytona. And that's really, it, it's, a, it's a blender. You know, you could pick a name out of a hat, almost. And that's, to me, is the big single biggest reason that the this, this sport has lost viewership and followers. Because it gets... Boring. It gets tiring watching the same group of guys dominate. And Jimmy Johnson winning all those races and all those championships. That hurt the sport. That didn't help the sport. And having those mega teams dominate like that is not good for the sport. And NASCAR hasn't done anything about it. The last time they actually did something was way back when Roush was the dominant team. And they had five cars on their team. They actually made a rule to bring it down to four. 
That was a fatal mistake. They had the opportunity then and there. They should have chopped it down to three teams. But you, you got these mega teams. They are the ones that are hurting the sport. So if you're a fan of one of those drivers, I'm sure you think everything's wonderful. Because you get to watch your driver be competitive every week. But it's not healthy for the sport. And all those championships and all those wins of, that Jimmy Johnson had, all those races he dominated. I remember, I can't tell you how many Dover races I attended. And it was just sitting there watching Jimmy Johnson completely obliterate everyone. You know, it, re it really made the experience a, a, a worse experience. And that to me is the biggest problem. But yet everyone focused on, oh, it's, it's the on-track product and the, the, the actual package of these cars. And we, you know, the package was better back here and back there. No, that's not the fucking problem. The problem is these mega teams. And the, the domination they have. This is why I think it's important not only to chop these teams down to a smaller size, but to also, you know, NASCAR needs to do a better job in policing the sport, making sure these guys are not pulling any funny business. So how many times have we seen these guys after a race, you find out they had an unapproved part on the car, or they, they played some, they did some funny business. And then you have people come out and defend them and say, oh, well, that's just part of NASCAR. No, that's why people don't like what they're watching because it's like, am I watching a legitimate sport or a joke? That drives people away. So I think that's the biggest issue. People have blamed the wrong issue for why there is lower viewership and people have walked away from NASCAR and it continues to go down. And now they're addressing a problem that wasn't really a problem. You've always had, you know, a, a couple of drivers who show up to a particular race and just have the best car that day and dominate, lead the most laps and, and lap a lot of cars. That's always been a part of NASCAR as long as even in its heyday, right? But you didn't have these mega teams. So at least you had sprinkled throughout the field different drivers who could show up on a particular day and be a serious threat to win. That is a pro and that's the problem. But you've always had drivers who lead a ridiculous amount of laps and, and just dominate. When did all of a sudden people start complaining, oh, these, you know, you got to make it so that there's more uh, changes for the lead. That's never been a problem. And the racing was good. The, and now, everything's aerodynamic. You took more tools away from the driver. These cars are sucked down to the track. What You know what you have now? You got open wheel racing, IndyCar. And I'm not, you know, harp, I'm not attacking IndyCar. You know, that is a particular form of racing that appeals to certain people. NASCAR is not supposed to be where, you know, a race where cars can go wide open on a mile and a half track and just be on rails. Where tire wear isn't really that big of an issue. Where... Everything's about drafting and aerodynamics and and that level of engineering. That's not what NASCAR has been. NASCAR is supposed to be about big, heavy, hard-to-control cars with a lot of horsepower. It's supposed to be different. It's what made NASCAR different and what it was. How many times did you see a really great open wheel car racers come to NASCAR and fail because it's different. It's not the same. I guarantee you that at Vegas, you could have had a bunch of open wheel guys come in there and do really well because it's 
it's a lot more similar to that. That's not what NASCAR is supposed to be about. These cars are supposed to be hard to control. They're supposed to be on the verge of going sideways if you give it too much gas because they're overpowered. They're not supposed to handle like a fucking op uh, Formula One car. I'm not saying they're exactly the same, but it's similar. You're running wide fucking open. And you can run high, low. But what difference does it make? If you're not drafting, you you can't do shit. And the, the saving grace of the Vegas race that made it a decent race is that it didn't turn out to be a pack race like we had at the All-Star race. That would have been what really just fucked it all up. So at least these cars did spread out. You did see passing, but it wasn't it wasn't as prominent as it was at Atlanta. And that's the difference. Atlanta was more about mechanical grip, tire wear, and you had to wheel the car a little more. You saw cars get squirrely. You didn't see that here. I don't remember seeing any cars, you know, and even scraping the wall. You saw a lot of cars like this close to the wall and never really scraped the wall. Yeah, there was a couple times where the car kind of scraped it. But you didn't see what you normally see where sometimes a car will pancake the wall coming out of a, a turn. You never saw that once. So the reason for that is these cars are on fucking rails. There's no challenge for these drivers. I wish they could just, wherever is wherever the next mile and a half track is, just as an experiment, chop the spoiler back down to what it was last year, raise the car an inch and a half, two inches. That's it. Just on, on two inches, raise the right height, and put a slightly bigger tapered spacer. Just let these guys have maybe 50 horsepower more, whatever. And just let it see what happens. Don't touch anything else. And just see what happens. I guarantee you, you'd get much better racing. And you wouldn't have guys going wide open throttle. They couldn't do it. But instead, they're going the opposite way. And all you heard yesterday was arrow this, arrow that, drafting. There was no talk of tire issues. Guys gambled. And, you know, like I said, Kurt Busch actually stayed out on old tires and was able to maintain a lead for a long time until he actually had to pit on a, off a restart and they couldn't overtake him. What does that tell you? And he was still on riding on a rail for a long time. And they couldn't really pass him. It wasn't a bad race. I don't want people to walk away saying, oh, now you're complaining that the way the race was... It, it wasn't a bad race. It was it was okay. But it could have been so much better. It should have been so much better. And as far as this aero package goes, it did not do what it was supposed to do to, to create whatever type of racing they were looking for. They wanted to see, first and foremost, more passes for the lead throughout the day. They wanted to see them, the leaders not be able to just pull away. And they still were able to do that. So what did this aero package actually do? All it did was really hurt the actual overall passing. There were passes throughout the day, but not as much as there would have been without this package. The package isn't the problem. It's these overpowered teams that are dominating, and you see the same group of guys really are the only ones competing for wins and, and dominating. That drives people away. And I can't stress enough. If I could point to one, the biggest, single biggest thing that really hurt NASCAR and, and NASCAR's popularity, it was that entire... Jimmy Johnson, Chad Knauss dominance that they had through all those championships. Five, 
championship seasons in a row. All those wins by Jimmy Johnson. That hurt the sport. It didn't help the sport. And I'm sure you disagree. If you're a Jimmy Johnson or a Hendricks fan, you loved it and you think it was great. But you're not thinking about the overall sport. People don't want to see the same fucking people dominating. You need a little more parity. And the only way to create that is to make sure that these cards are as evenly matched as possible in terms of the rule book, holding these people accountable. Okay? And cutting these race teams down a little bit. Just make it a three car team limit. You know? And see what happens. You can't let these mega teams continue to dominate. It's going to kill the sport. Those are my thoughts. I want to know if you guys disagree, agree. What did you think of the race? Did you like it more than the Atlanta race? I thought the Atlanta race had more of an old school feel to it. I'll take that any day of the week over what we got at Vegas. Again, wasn't a terrible race, but I think that was mostly because it didn't turn out to be a pack race like we saw at Charlotte. And because of that, you know, it's you, you did get cars spreading out and, and, and there was passing throughout. And as far as the, the race up front for the lead, it was no different than any other race. So this Aero package, what did it actually accomplish that, was, that it was meant to accomplish in a positive way? I, I think we're going to have serious problems if this Gen 7 car, whenever it comes out, turns out to be another aero-dependent machine. NASCAR needs to get back to the, to the old school roots of, you know, high horsepower, hard to control cars. They weren't sucked up down to the ground. You got to li lift these cars up just an inch or two. Let, let some of that air get underneath the car and these guys will not be able to go wide open. And then they have that tool they can play with, that throttle response. Going wide open. You see, like, at restricted play tracks, these guys are wide open and they can't really do anything unless a hole opens up in front of them and they have someone behind them. That's not fucking racing, man. That's just fucking... That's a game of chance. Those are my thoughts. What do you think?